to Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Nimsch, I'm here with Raven. This is the last match of the day, last match of Group A. The winner advances to the top eight playoffs and the loser is eliminated. Colento versus Sixo. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty big deal this match for these two players. Uh, like you said, the winner does go through and the loser is out. And um, Sixo starting with his Zulok. So we've seen Zulok perform fairly well so far in this group. And uh, Colento going with a uh, tried and tested midrange druid deck. So this is a good matchup for the Zoo, I believe, especially with this kind of opening where uh, Sixo can just uh, deal a lot of damage and uh, even coin Defender of Argus next turn if he chooses to or just go for the brand and then get double buff with the defender so this is unbelievable right <laughs> actually this opening yeah and when you see um like the druid star obviously you look at the druid's hand here so you see clento's hand it's dr boom ancient of law clearly not great early game but also when you see the combo and then a lack of removal in the form of say swipes or rats or even a dinosaur slash sprint to challenge from turn two it's definitely going to be an uphill struggle against this kind of star because druid is known to struggle to deal with multiple minions on the board especially with like varying health and with this defender of argus coming down the shade almost has to run into the flame and, uh, or one of them to kill it and already this game's looking rough with this power overwhelming in hand yeah he he was missing turn four like his alternative for turn four was just uh, savage and kill, kill one of the flame imps because the defender of Argus shut down the hero power. Now with Pilot the Shredder, he at least has something to fight back. But will it be enough? There is uh, six, eight damage already on board, putting him to eight with the power overwhelming. That's even more. So I don't see a good way to actually come back from this. Shredder will have to attack into the flame imp, and then the the only way is to play the Druid of the Claw. Oh, now with Innervate, maybe is there something? Do you see something, Raven? Do you see hope? <laughs> well, the issue is, Innovate into Ancient of Law looks okay in terms of healing, but healing only delays the inevitable, and the Druid of the Claw Taunt does some work, but as you said, with Power Overwhelming, he can PO, and then uh, Defender of Argus. So, you know, there's so much damage that is pretty much unavoidable. He might not be dead this turn, depending on what play Kalento chooses to make. Um, is, is Innovate Force of Nature potentially worthwhile? Uh, it, I think it, that might be... It looks bad to just glance at, but it might actually be the only way to clear off these minions because, as we said, there's so much damage represented. It's gonna, it's gonna be hard. So if you go for force, you do use innervate. You have one mana floating, and you don't even kill all the minions on board, and that's a problem. If you uh, go for something like a Druid of a Claw, uh, you will be able to block some attacks. But Colento decides to go for Doctor Boom. He is saying you are not having it. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to try to come back on the back of Doctor Boom, but this is not enough. And Sixo has it, so Sixo is taking this yeah. first game. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the little smile as he kills Kalento in the flashy way of killing the Wrath Guard, as damage done to the Wrath Guard does pass straight onto the hero itself. So super quick game, Zoo doing what Zoo does, and again Kalento suffering from. Maybe getting the uh, not the best initial matchup because when you start a series, it's really hard that like you pretty much just lock in whatever deck because to a certain extent it doesn't really matter in, in conquest especially. Um, but when you that deck doesn't line up well against their first pick, you, you know you're in a rough point from from day one, I guess. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But this time we're going to see a paladin versus paladin, and both of the players are play, uh, playing a secret version. So this mirror. Um, can sometimes be decided by whoever gets the secret keeper out first um because it it has the the double sided effect of the player with the secret keeper can choose to buff it with its uh, any secrets that he has or it actually just stops uh, locks your opponent's secret keeper um and uh, more importantly the secrets out as well because you'll always be slightly ahead because you get the initiative on the attack first yeah that's absolutely true but there is even more to the matchup um whoever gets master first is important whoever plays mistress challenger first is also very important so i feel the player who starts the game the player without the coin has an advantage overall because he will be able to play. Uh, he will be able to play Mistress Changer first, unless somebody has an opening like Sixo, where you can play that Secret Keeper on empty board, and then still you have the coin. 
to use yeah, later. Coin, coin it into card camera is really nice. Mini bots normally one of the cards that causes an issue for the secret keeper opening, but you can just clear it off and the secret keeper is still a one two and Paladin doesn't normally have anything that can just direct to just kill a minion, you know, straight out of hand. And we see Muster is gonna be played now. I'll only be able to ping it for one. So although Sixo doesn't really have a good turn three, um, the threat's still there on Kalent in Kalento's mind. If he has like two secrets now, suddenly he's in some trouble. Yeah. The, the missing the turn three, uh, I mean, just playing juggler into it might not work here. He might actually opt, opt out to play um, a dude, but this is something you don't want to see on turn three. And uh, Colento will be the first one to play Mitchell's Challenger, where the next turn he can actually clear the board and play um, Shredder, which was not contested by the weapon. Yeah, this is really nice now because Colento, as you said, going first in this match is actually really important because. The, uh, the Shredder being down first means, as we said, like the Shredder from Sixo and the True Silver Champion, all these four drops in hand and none of them really do much versus the other Shredder and Hunter's um, in a really good spot now. This is a, an interesting uh, situation change because uh, because of the fact that he got um, the, the secret, he was able to change the game plan and play two small uh, minions trying to block the secrets from six so because those minions were still not contested and th this actually created even more power on board than just uh, the pilot shredder because he got that secret yeah that competitive spirit going up and wow shredder into avenge this is insane because the, the way mysterious challenger becomes even more powerful is when you don't play it on its own on the board when you play it with other minions the avenge can go onto the targets to spread the power across the board which is what you want to do and at this point for six so he does have sludge belcher but look at this board is sludge belcher even going to be enough when colento follows up with the challenger yeah he still cannot kill anything at the moment so colento as you mentioned he has the minions and with mysterious challenger he's uh, almost sealing the game Tyrion again lights the light years away uh, there is the keeper <laughs> well played from six already so yeah and just just a small note as well um, the reason Clento didn't play the Avenge on that last turn was because Challenger pulls the other Avenge out of the deck and Sixo didn't have anything from hand to actually kill any of the minions that were on the board anyway. So the Avenge wouldn't have worked that turn. So nice, you know, like small things from Clento that, uh, you know, really make a big impact on the game. This is incredible, Raven. I, I wasn't expecting a day like this. So Group A, we had a lot of players who tend to play Control. So I was thinking we're going to cast some uh, Think Tank matches where they have intricate plays with Reno Locks. And this is Slugfest from the very beginning. They play Face Hunter, Face Shaman, Zool. Like, I feel like everybody plays Zool. Secret <laughs> Paladins. Are you trying to say that these decks don't have intricate plays, Nymph, and that decks like Secret Paladin play themselves? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, they are maybe a bit more straightforward in a way, you know, more honest sometimes. Yeah, we, <laughs> we are seeing a lot of smoke from these guys, though, which, um, you know, it, w but w what's interesting is, although a lot of people don't like highly aggressive decks, when you start coming up against matches where it's uh, aggressive versus aggressive decks, they're actually really intricate in terms of when to trade, when to, you know, go face and put pressure on in that way. So small plays do actually make a big impact. And going into this match, though, it's going to be six or Secret Paladin again versus Kalento's Maligos lock. With it. He's probably feeling a little bit rough about it, considering he got 0-3 uh, with it last time. <laughs> yeah, versus Stan Sivka. But um, what do you think about the matchups uh, specifically? So Maligos... Um, Warlock. He brought it for a reason. And uh, this deck should be okay versus Paladin if you are able to grab the, the early game control. I, I, I'm looking at his hand. So he has Hellfire uh, versus the, the min Master for Battle and, uh, and a lot of minions. He has Big Game Hunter versus Mistress Challenger on 6, where he can just um, proc Avenge in a way to get Mistress Challenger above 6 attack. He has actually double Big Game Hunter in this deck. Even. Wow. Yeah, the, the Maligos Wallet normally plays double BGH because um, it has things like Abusive as well. And what you want to do is just slow the board down. And Abusive can be comboed a lot of the time to on a, say, a five attack minion to put it in BGH range. But in terms of the matchup in general, it sort of plays like the Reno Lock versus uh, Secret Paladin matchup, where as long as the Warlock can keep the board as clear as possible, then they have a pretty good chance because the Secret Paladin normally runs out of juice. And as you said quite rightly, if Kalento can proc the Avenge onto the Mysterious Challenger, then just big game hunter it. That's a huge tempo loss for Sixo. 
yeah, they, they do normally run out of juice, but looking at his hand, uh, he uh, Sixo already has had a curve, and now he has Shredder into, or like Belcher into Mr. Challenger, into Shredder and Master for Battle. Yeah, and again we see Kalento actually just like lacking dragons in hand. I bet he's going to draw one now because I've said that. Yeah, of course he is. Um, but he's, you know, we've seen a few other games where like just not having the dragons makes the cards so much uh, so much worse. But getting a Twilight Drake down is pretty nice and just a corruption on the Belcher because this is pretty good because the Belcher can't actually like kill itself anyway. So the Belcher is going to die regardless next turn. Yeah, so it's a full like treat. Is it uh, a good situation though? Because he will still try to get that avenge on Mr. Challenger. So Belcher, if it um, doesn't matter where it attacks, if it if it dies, there will still be a one to token, and um, there will be a two one from Noble Sacrifice. So Avenge can actually land on the Belcher on the on the one two. Yeah, and this is a nice play from Sixo as well. Where oh oh okay, there's the. Uh... There's some secrets going off, guys, but um, that's interesting that the, uh, it actually dies on the end of the turn, so Redemption's brought the Belcher back. Oh, wow, Corruption, that's corruption feels bad, because Corruption uh, kills the minion on the Warlock's turn, so all the secrets go off, so that's insane. I actually didn't... I wonder what was happening for just a second then, and then realized how Corruption worked. Yeah, exactly, right? That was the <laughs> most confusing situation in some time. Uh, but a funny interaction, and uh, something that you really have to remember when you're facing, I guess... Paladin with your corruption, and I think we might see it more and more, especially with the Dark Feather being played in almost any deck. Yeah, it's uh, the op cards like Dark Feather are really fun because it brings cards you wouldn't normally bring into the deck into the match themselves. So it's really good, and Kalento has actually done really well with this board. He uh, managed to get the BGH off, the Avenge hit the target he wanted it to. He might he had the coil for the the first half of the new Belcher again, so not too terrible. And the Repentance going onto the big game on a not horrible either, only losing one hand. So suddenly Colento might have a chance to come back. Uh, he is dropping uh, really low with the with the damage with the Hellfire, but he has one uh, anti kill bot. Yeah, a lot of it is going to actually rely on what comes out of the Shredder, whether it's a high value minion or not. Two, three, not terrible. Um, and he does have Noble Sacrifice Avenge in hand, so he can still push for damage. Or just Blessing of Kings as well. <laughs> Definitely not terrible. Putting the Warlock to two, so he cannot tap uh, without healing first on will die. Yeah, now also Colento will need to deal with that 6-7. Uh, he has the Soul Fire, but two Seekers are up, so how can Colento survive? Can he survive? He's randomly playing Reno with multiples and, and draws it <laughs> and plays it. Uh, yeah, this is definitely rough, as now, although Antique Killbot... Antique Killbot doesn't actually even keep him alive at this point, right? Well, you do... Uh, he has to not attack, I guess. What, what are the secrets, though? Uh, it's avenge. Get, get down and avenge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like so, the the most terrible combination probably. I guess he has to blackwing. Oh god. No, no I don't think that. I was looking at blackwing corrupt to soulfire on the six seven, but then he has the issue of being gone to health, uh, which is quite the problem I've been told. And avenge um, still works. Yeah. What is so the? Hmm. Does he have to attack in? Heal bot, hope the Avenge goes on the 1-1 one, one, and soul fire the 1-1. One, one. Is that the only way to like... Attack into 6-7, Avenge the 1-1? One, one? No way. He, he will not be able to kill the 6-7 the then. Yeah, but he'll heal bot, right? So oh, yeah, if he yeah, attacks yeah. in now, he uh, he procs the secret. Oh, okay, he's chosen not to attack. Okay, so he's going for the slight safer route. But if he attacked in, the Noble Sacrifice dies and the Avenge goes potentially on the 1-1 one, one, and then soul fire it. Oh man, this is tough. But uh, Sixo has to. If Sixo go face, that might give Colento a chance to finish with damage. But Sixo knows better. Yeah, this is the safer play because you stop the 2 1 from procking the Noble Sacrifice and you have plenty of power on board. Something ludicrous would have to happen for uh, Colento to be able to wipe this board and still live next turn. Can Colento survive and win the game with Maligus Sulfire next turn? No, <laughs> probably not. I, I'm gonna give a pretty firm no on this one. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident there's there's no out, unfortunately, for Colento here. Um, is Doomsayer an out? Doomsayer is, I believe, an out. If you get the... Um, like, you can basically even... If you go for the Doomsayer plan or something crazy, you can attack, get Avenge whenever, and still try to play 
Blackwing, kill the 4 free. If you get a Doomsayer, then the board is wiped. And um, there's only the, this one weapon attack. So Doomsayer can still save Kalento. Is there anything else? I don't think there is. I think he's all in on, on the Doomsayer coming out of the Shredder, which, let's be honest, happens more often than you think. Or at least it does to me. Well, it's, that's something you definitely have to consider. If there, there's um, no other out, you still have to go for that. This is the scariest snow chugger I've ever seen. Here we go. That's not and it's there. So that is going to be game in there. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty convincing win, but again, just Kalento's Maligos lot just failing him at the moment. Must be feeling uh, pretty bad, and that's something that must come into your mind as a player in terms of you, you brought a deck, you brought your lineup. Kalento's probably put a lot of effort into the lineup, and then one deck just keeps failing you. Yeah, that's absolutely true, but on the other hand, um... What is 6 -0 last deck? That's the rogue that he failed himself. So now we kind of have this battle of the failed decks. <laughs> rogue lost 0 3. Maligos Warlock lost 0 3. Then they had games where they lost with it, they won with it. That's why they are here right now and Dog is eliminated. But uh, this will be the one, mo one most important game in this match. If 6 0 is able to find a win with the rogue, he will advance and eliminate Colento from the whole tournament. Yeah, it's a. Uh... Pretty, pretty weird matchup as well, not one you see too often. And um, I think it genuinely, I think the Rogue can get out the big burst first, but uh, the Maligos lock has uh, the, you know, probably more removal because of all the AoE that doesn't require setups from, say, Blade Flurry. Um, and yeah, it's just because that Guardian might actually do a lot of work this game, especially because he's just drawn in the, another Dragon to actually proc it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I feel like um, this matchup, I would normally favor Rogue, but then it, it really depends on the hands. So if uh, if Warlock is able to set up a board with big minions like the Drakes and follow up with uh, with uh, Azure Drake and Twilight Guardian, Rogue will need something to deal with uh, with those those minions. If there is a Sap or if there is a SI7 with some damage, then maybe. But 6 0 first, he didn't get a coin, so now he is uh, forced to play Vanilla. Violet Teacher again um, in this tournament, so I would f have to favor Colento for now at least. Yeah, and looking at Colento's hand though, nothing feels too fantastic because you want to kill that Violet Teacher, but it will cost you a Dark Bomb unless he wants to overkill and play the uh, oh, the um, Gang Boss and then uh, Soul Fire. But if he Dark Bombs, he can't really do anything else other than tap, which maybe isn't the worst case on 28 health on turn four. What about just uh, slamming Garden going for face? I mean, you can't expect all the craziness like preparation sap. Well, you, you probably do not expect preparation sap because if there will be one, it will already happen. So no yeah. prep sap. Might be a sap top deck they're expecting, or maybe preparation with eviscerate is possible. But uh, if there is nothing, then you might position yourself pretty well. Yeah, and I think something to bear in mind as well is it's the the. It's on 6 0 to deal with Kalento's board more than the other way around because Kalento actually runs double heal bot in this deck, who uh, we've seen come out. Whereas 6 0, I, have we seen any heals from 6 0 since he's played his rogue? Uh, no, we've only seen the Sludge Belcher. No Farts, yes. no heal bots yet. Yeah, so if there's no heals in 6 0's deck, um, or at least, you know, maybe one, then Kalento's got the slight advantage of being able to just simply heal up for more. So um, Sixo really does have to reduce this damage down, because as we said earlier, sometimes Malilock just acts like a beatdown deck because the minions are so big. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And um, here with six mana, Colento will be able to... to Azure Drake Soulfire. What does he discard, Ooh. though? Maligos. No, nope, no. That's a that there. So that's still pretty good. I mean, you know, Maligos... Even if he uses the spells, might uh, get less value, but still, if you've seen one sap already, if you play Maligos on turn 9, what can Rogue do if there is no second sap? Like, dealing that amount of damage is impossible, and then all your spells are empowered. You have still Dark Peddlers, you can get those Soulfires, you have Hellfire even, to just deal the, the final points of damage if Maligos stays alive. Yeah, what do you think about Six? So yeah, I was gonna say I was surprised Six was waiting that long because it feels like this the second spell power backstabs really powerful here to get the uh, Azure Drake off the board. Obviously, the frustration is it leaves the uh, the the fourth three alive, which kills his Azure Drake straight up. Yeah, but it's still not a bad deal. I mean, next turn he will be able to sprint uh, with preparation and play SI7, or maybe um, maybe he will get a pillager even. 
Yeah, that could be really nice, actually. Having prep sprint always feels good, especially in these controlling matchups where card advantage actually makes a huge impact on the game. There is a Torison, uh, so Malagos will be able to come down on turn, well, I guess still 9, but uh, with Moral Coil, for example, for free. The best zero mana removal ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's the sprint. There's Dr. Boom. That He did get the Tomb Pillager. Oh, and the Abyss, though. Do you favor just the Abyss to remove the minion off? You are getting a little bit low. Yeah, I think you might. Oh, this is to. nice, actually. Yeah, but you definitely remove the minion. Uh, the, the extra spell damage, you don't want to get lower um, than, let's say, 12. Do not enable some crazy Dark Bomb into Hellfire, into Soulfire combos or double Hellfire things. Um, Hellfire, though, here, you can go for it, I, I guess. Um, so that's that's an option. Hellfire into Imp Gang Boss. What else is there? So you can still tap and play Torison. Yeah, I think what uh, Kalento's relying on is the fact that he's still fairly healthy on 21, and that poison and one charge of the dagger's been used. So if the dagger hadn't been used, he's had two charges left, maybe you're a little bit more scared of something like uh, the second prep oil onto Flurry or something for a lot of damage, but with, with just the one durability, you should be feeling pretty okay, and getting that much value from Emperor always feels good. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also he needed to do it because uh, he, he needed that value specifically after Sprint. If you just go for a, a board wipe with a free free on the board it wouldn't do much and a smart edwin from 6-0 avoiding those big game hunters look at this turn though do you want to hellfire hellfire twilight guardian that, that seems pretty good right unless i'm missing something no it's uh, it is uh decent <laughs> it's going for the coil instead okay. you can go for a black wing corruptor yeah yeah, again, I think because of the durability on the weapon, this is fine, because Sixo can't really do a lot of damage because it rel with no minions on the board, of course, because he, he needs to oil up to do any sort of big burst, but then he can't attack and flurry. So the second sprint does come in, draws some pretty pretty good cards, but are they going to be good enough this late in the game? Yeah, it's a bit awkward, because at the moment, if you want to play... Like, you cannot kill... Uh, Black and Corruptor in a clean way, and also develop a minion. So now you're throwing away the Belcher, more or less. Are we gonna see Malagos coil? I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to spot lethals if there is any possibility, but not really. The the one tool um, token will will stop any lethal here. So Malagos coil would not be bad, but you're not, you don't have to do it. Oh, there is a dark bomb. Ooh. Yeah, I think the safe play is pretty okay now. Um, I think safe play is better overall instead of doing anything too crazy with Malagos Cole. You have so many options. You can put up, as we can see now, the Twilight Guardian to heal, but still kill off the, the threatening part of the Belcher. And then you've just got to start to think, like, what is the Rogue actually going to do to be able to get back into this game? When you're sitting on Malagos, Dart Bomb, Coil, BGH, even a Hellfire, you know, you have so many potential answers to anything the Rogue can do. Well, 6 has a really nice clear here with, um, like, if you Thalnos, you will deal 4 damage, but even Thalnos, like, you can flurry this board, then you need to deal 3 more to the 3-6. You can play Dr. Boom, and then you have 2 mana. Is that 2 mana enough to just uh, eviscerate? Yeah, so he can clear this board and uh, I have Dr. Boom. Keep the 1-2. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. What's he going for? So the blade flow is happening. The Thanos did come down. And he uh, opts in. No, oh, okay. So he looks like he's going to play Eviscerate Coin Lothab instead to buy him a turn effectively for anything uh, too crazy happening. Or not. And I'm wrong again. <laughs> um, that's really interesting. Like, was maybe he's just thinking I need the Abyss to win the game, right? Yeah, that's a, as a reach card because of the possible heal bot. Uh, we, he's seen one heal bot, though. So this is not over yet, uh, even with Malagos, but... Uh, so Dark Bomb will be 8 damage. Hmm. So do you just clear minions anyway? I mean, versus Rogue, you, you mostly won't like to clear the minions because of possible oil, and by this point, Sixo did cast Sprint twice. So I would expect oils, I would expect Flurry. So you don't want to have those minions. Uh, the only minion that can charge in a rogue's deck, which is sometimes in, sometimes out, is a deckhand. 
We don't know if Sixo. We haven't seen it play, being played by Sixo. So if you if you kill all the minions, you will know that um, Ro well, you hope the the rogue will not kill you, and you will have time to maybe play your minions and try to set up a board. Yeah, I'm just wondering if this. How much damage does Sixo actually have? Regardless, he can cut. He can. So what does he get? He's with the oil. Some four. Six, yeah, he four, can hit to seven, eight. Eleven. Because he can hit flurry. Anyway, so he's not quite there yet, and with, as you said, the, the focus on removal from Kalento's key, uh, if you leave that minion on the board, then things get scary. Does that change anything? I mean, I guess he oils now, because he has to clear, right? Yeah. With um, Tinker and... Oh, this is lethal. Yeah, yeah. This he goes is... up to six. Yeah. Actually, th yeah, that was the, the plus four damage he needed. Wow, okay, yeah. so... <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That was really fast, and he got it super fast as well. So Sixo is going to take the match and eliminate Colento. Colento never had a chance to use that Malagos, but maybe if he would play it a bit earlier, we don't know. He do he doesn't know, and he is eliminated for now. So Sixo advances with Stan Sivka to the playoffs on the, the last day. But uh, that's just the beginning, guys. That's just the beginning. This is Hearthstone Champions League. We we finished Group A. And we'll have Group B for you tomorrow at the same time. Uh, Raven, any summary from your side? Yeah, just, um, I mean, again, like any two of these four players in this group could have gone through quite easily. And they're really good sets overall. You see how close a lot of the games were. Even though the scores may not have represented it on every set, the actual games were, you know, really quite intricate. And I'm just looking forward to tomorrow as well. In Group B, we have Ecot, RDU, Pavel, and Hoy. So uh, that's really going to be a good set to cast. A lot of uh, good characters in that group as well. So definitely looking forward to seeing what those guys can bring to the table. Absolutely. So thank you so much for casting with me today. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, tune up tomorrow for more Hearts in Action. It's 5 p.m. European time, I believe. I don't know what uh, time US time is that. Raven, do you remember? Uh, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> Last nine hours? No, I, it for, depends for where you are in the US. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you tomorrow. Have a, have a good evening.